Alright guys, welcome back to another video with me Kevin Twist and in today's video we are doing SPFL predictions Dylan is going to be in the latter part of the video but let's start with mine in 12th place who will get relegated from the Premiership I have a team that won a double not too long ago but then we're in a bad situation last season almost went down by the playoffs I have St Johnston I feel like losing Xander Clark is just going to be so hard hit into them even though they've brought in the likes of a Jamie Murphy and Dre Wright, who are decent Premiership players, and obviously having the likes of Stephen May and Halloran on the attack in front, it's not a terrible team, but I just think it's time that St. Johnson go down. I just feel like, unless they make some interesting signings before the window ends, I just feel like they're doomed for the Championship. And then on to 11th, who do I think will be in that relegation playoff spot? I have a team that a lot of people might put bottom because they have just came up. Come on, look, I just have them finishing just above St. Johnson because I think bringing back Jordan Jones, I don't think he's that great a player. But if they can even get half the form he was at come on before that move to Rangers, because Derek McKenna is a decent enough manager. Plus Lafferty, he might be getting on a bit and coming close to retirement, but if he gets the service he'll score as much as I hate him. But I think they two will get enough goals just to finish above bottom, but I think the rest of the squad is a bit questionable. But Derek McInnes is a good enough manager. And then on to 10th, I have St Mirren. St Mirren might also be some people's relegation candidates. I have them as a part of that, but I just think they're a little bit better than what there is elsewhere. They obviously do have the likes of Declan Gallagher coming to the club, which I think will be a good signing. And then they have the likes of Brophy up top. It's just a... It's a decent squad, but I don't think it's better than any of the ones I'm going to mention later. Maybe questionable with the next one I'm going to say, but... I, I rate the manager, Robertson, but I just think he needs more players into that squad. So on to ninth, Livingston. Similar kind of squad level, but Livingston's play style is so awkward that when you go to play Livingston on that plastic pitch, they get up in your face. They have lost the likes of Civil to Dundee United and also Alan Forrest on a free to hearts. But I think bringing in the likes of Jamie Brandon, keeping Jack Hamlet, even though he's not really played too much for Livingston, I think he might maybe get a chance this season. It's an interesting time, obviously, Obelai at the back, and then they have Anderson at the front of the pitch. I think they're just so much in your face, hard to play against. I think they'll stay up this season, finishing ninth place. And then eighth, I have a team that disappointed in the qualifiers. I don't know what's happened in the second leg. Hopefully they put Sligo out. I don't know, but Motherwell is who I have in eighth place. I just think... The squad isn't great. It's uh, probably a bit underwhelming for our Motherwell side. I think Van Veen's a decent enough striker. Liam Kelly's quite a good goalkeeper. But bringing in the likes of Paul McGinn might be a decent sign and we'll see if he kicks on a bit. I don't know what's really going to happen with Motherwell, but I see a mid table finish, to be honest, which is why I put them eighth. And then seventh, I have a team that finished in the top six last season. But I see them just missing out this season. I have Ross County. Ross County have lost a vital player, which is why I see them just dropping a wee bit further back. And it's because Regan Charles Cook left to go to the Belgian League um, on a free. He was the tie top goal scorer with Giacomakis, who we'll talk about later in the video. But I just think losing 13 goals, I think it was out of any team would be a big hit, but I think the rest of the squad's decent enough for that mid-table area, plus bringing the likes of Jan Dehanda from Swansea, we'll see how he does, I think he might be a good signing, and Blair Spittle has left the Motherwell, we'll see how that changes things as well, and then they brought in a few loan players from the likes of Bristol, and then obviously some signings from the Canadian League I believe, I think they'll finish just outside the top six. And then in sixth place, I have a team that some people don't even have in the top six, or even contention, some predictions I've seen. I have Hibs who crashed out the Premier Sports Cup, the League Cup, in the group stage, underperforming. 
It puts the manager Lee Johnson under a lot of pressure, but they have brought in the likes of an Aidan McGeady who's come to the end of his career, but he does have quality if he gets the chance. They brought in the striker from St Gallen. They have got rid of the likes of Deadwood players you would see them as for Hibs, or not what Hibs see themselves as with Paul McGindry right leaving. Accidentally saying Bashir is quite funny as well, but also getting the quality goalkeeper who's coming to the latter end of his career. David Marsh, I think it's a good signing, and I think it's just enough to get into that top six just, but leaving Josh Doig's and then Josh Doig leaving, should I say, uh, to Hells Verona for over €3 million, Euros, I think it's a good fee to get, but we'll see how that dictates the play style of Hibs, plus how much he actually changes the quality going forward, because he's quite good at bringing the ball up the pitch. And then onto the top five, I have the team that finished one place higher last season, just going one place back. Dundee United, the lost their manager, Tam Coates, has went away to a terrible team, which is quite sad to see, because he's quite a promising manager, hopefully he comes back to Scotland or to the UK, so going to see him a bit better. But they have brought in the likes of a Craig Sibble on a free from Livingston, bringing in Stephen Fletcher, which I think is an incredible sign, even though he's at the latter part of his career. If he gets the serves, he'll score. Plus, they've also got Tony Watt already up top. Hawks staying. However, they have lost Seagrass to Celtic, but then they also have brought in an Australian goalkeeper to replace him. We'll see how that changes things. Plus, Lewis Nielsen's went to Hearts, who we'll talk about later. But it's an interesting time at Dundee United. Plus, keeping Levitt on a permanent from Manchester United is a brilliant sign, which I think will keep them in that top five area. And then, let's move on to fourth, a team that was in the relegation battle last year after having such high hopes under a rebuild season it was. And then having to get a new manager in. And I think the new manager will do well enough with this squad. I think Aberdeen will just get fourth. You know, they've got enough players there that I'm not going to question them being back in that relegation battle. I just think if they, keep, if they keep Christian Ramirez, he's good enough to score goals in this league. Plus, Ruse coming in from Derby, I think he's a great goalkeeper. However, losing Lewis Ferguson, we'll see, but they've got that Stuart in now as a captain. They have got rid of uh, Declan Gallagher, of course, but they have brought in Liam Scales on one from Celtic to play him at centre-back. He played an amazing pass. I talked about this in my last video, go check that out. All about set transfers and also lost Calvin Ramsey. It'll be an interesting season for them, but I just think they'll get fourth. I don't think they can have two bad seasons, Aberdeen, or things will really start to kick off over there. And then into the top three, I have probably you could guess it because of the last three teams available. It's Hearts. I think Hearts have done some really good business this window. We're getting Alan Forrest on a free, and then also getting the likes of George Grant in from Peterborough, keeping Alex Cochran from Brighton. Getting Lewis Nielsen on a free, I think just business like that is just really good. They may have lost John Suter on a free, but they have kept a lot of really decent players and signed a lot of good players on quite low fees. And then getting one big signing in Lauren Shanklin, who he has showed they can score goals in the SPFL Championship. He didn't score too many in the SPFL, uh, SPFL Premiership, but I think if Hearts give him the service, He'll score goals, and I think he'll be up there in the goal scoring charts. So now on to the top two. What Glasgow side do I have second? What, time do, what one do I have first? I'm really stumbling my words here. But second place, I have Glasgow Rangers. I just think they've gotten maybe a little bit better, maybe a sidestep in the squad. They have got Suter in. As maybe well, he'll probably replace Bassey, who's left. But keeping Suter fits an issue. And then a Rebo's led, or maybe not as high a fee as they would have wanted. But they have got Lawrence in on free, which I think is a good signing. However, Matondo's maybe a bit questionable, because I don't think he's that good, but he might be good in our league. And then getting Ben Davis at the back, he'll probably compete with Suter for that other place. It's an interesting time for Rangers, but I just don't see this being what Kenny Miller, I believe, say a past the parcel. It's a very one-sided pass the parcel if Rangers only win 1 out of 11, but you know, we'll move on to the one who's won 10 out of the 11. Glasgow Celtic will finish first place yet again as Ange Postecoglou Celtic will go for two in a row 
and I believe that because we've kept the likes of Cameron Carter, Vickers, Jota, Maeda all coming in permanently after the loans, and then many more signings like the likes of Aaron Moy and Seagrass on a free, plus he ends on loan, and etc. etc. You want to hear a more detailed video about Celtic's transfer business, go check out the last video. And now, let's see what Dylan had to say. Yo, what's happening guys, it's Dylan here and I'm back again for the second year running to give my SPFL predictions for the upcoming season, this time for the upcoming 22-23 campaign, which is due to kick off within the next couple of days. Let's get into it. So, at 12th place, I've chosen St Mirren. While I think Stephen Robinson's a good manager, especially during his stint at Motherwell, I just don't see them having a good campaign at all. They've already been knocked out of the Scottish League Cup in fairly embarrassing circumstances, with losses against both Arbroath and Airdrionians consigning them to a season outside of the competition. However, most people would say that they're nothing more than pre-season games, so they don't weigh in particularly heavy into my prediction here. What does concern me, however, is their lack of the transfer business. They've made a few free signings, with the likes of Mark O'Hara and Declan Gallagher joining from Motherwell and Aberdeen respectively, as well as Tayosi Olesanya from Middlesbrough, but I just don't see much quality in their side, especially with the likes of Conor McCarthy leaving the club. I think they'll struggle to stay up this season. At 11th place, I've got Ross County. If you remember back to this time last year, I had Ross County dead last in my predictions, but they ended up having a really solid campaign and finishing 6th. So, why do I have them 11th then? It's for one simple reason, the loss of Regan Charles Cook to Belgian side KAS Yupin in the summer. If you don't remember, Charles Cook was the joint top scorer in the Premiership last season, and unfortunately, Ross County ended up losing him on a free transfer. In terms of incoming signings, they've signed a couple of players from the Canadian Premiership and loaned and or bought out a few English Championship and League One bench players, including Liverpool Academy product Jan Banda, who arrived on a free from Swansea. I think, without the goal scoring output of Charles Cook and no proven replacement, they'll struggle next season. At 10th place, I've got St Johnston, a team that surprised me in a very negative sense last season. I think they've approved enough to stay clear of the relegation places this time around, but not enough to finish much higher than 10th. I think they've made some good signings this season, with the 2021 Cup double winners, picking up the likes of Jamie Murphy and Dre Wright from Hibs, rescuing Ryan McGowan from SC Kuwait, the free signing of Andy Considine from Aberdeen and the loan signing of promising young Celtic fullback Adam Montgomery. Losing Xander Clark will be a difficult one for them, but I'm sure they'll cope. At 9th we've got a bit of a shorter one, I've got newly promoted Kilmarnock. After spending a season outside of the top flight, they came back in quick fashion, finishing top of the Scottish Championship, two points ahead of our growth. There seems to be something of a good feeling going around Rugby Park at the moment, with a great manager in Derek McInnes at the club, and a few good first team signings that, in my opinion, will serve to consolidate their place in the Premiership once more, and this time they actually are in the division, sorry Liz. In 8th, I've got something of a controversial pick, but I'm sure nobody can really blame me. Hibs. I promise this isn't just me being reactionary from the League Cup, or being biased, by the way. Hibs, in all honesty, have had quite an interesting window. It's hard to talk about Hibs' transfer business without talking about Josh Doig's multi-million pound move to Hellas Verona, which will harm them a lot in my opinion, on the pitch at least. I think signings like David Marshall, Ewan Henderson and Nohan Kenny are actually quite shrewd, as well as the accidental signing of Rocky Bashiri, of course. However, I feel like they'll just struggle, as the team just seems cursed at the moment with poor management from the board and a lack of commitment and morale for the players, which will only serve to be exacerbated by the signing of Aidan McGeady in my mind. I still think Lee Johnson is a half decent manager though, so we'll see what happens. I'm personally tipping them for another 8th place finish. Kicking off another somewhat surprising pick some may say, I've got Motherwell at 7. In all honesty, there isn't too much reason for this, their transfer business just hasn't been particularly exciting, with the only two major signings being Paul McGinn and Blair Smithall from Hibs and Ross County respectively, while they've lost some useful players such as Jordan Roberts and the previously mentioned Mark O'Hara, as well as Darrell O'Connor who I thought had a decent future at Motherwell. I'm looking forward to seeing if they can get another top half finish, but I personally don't see it. Getting into the top half, at 6th I've got Dundee United. Despite their really impressive 4th place finish last season, they've really degraded in my opinion over a really short space of time. The big one for me is the loss of their manager, Tam Kortz, who left United for Hungarian 9th place side Budapest Honved in the summer. They've replaced him with Jack Ross, who is definitely a competent manager, but in my opinion, Kortz was a great manager for United and will be sorely missed. The other big loss is that of their keeper Benjamin Segrist, 
who went to Celtic on a free transfer to be their backup keeper. These were probably two of the most crucial people at the club in last, pe- uh, last season's successes, so it's going to be really difficult to replace them. Another big loss for them is promising fullback Lewis Nielsen, who left to join Hearts. I think the £320,000 signing of Dylan Levitt from Manchester United's Academy could prove to be extremely good business if he can improve from his loan spell last season, but I don't think they'll be able to replace the manager or keeper well enough to keep their fourth place finish. Fifth place is one that I debated on long and hard, but I eventually settled on Livingston. I honestly don't know why, as the transfer business has been quite negative, with the likes of Alan Forrest leaving the hearts, as well as Craig Sibold moving to Dundee United. Ismael Gonçalves is a ridiculously rogue transfer from them, with the ex hearts journeyman moving from the Bangladeshi League back to the Premiership. However, he was prolific at Hearts a few seasons ago, and I think it could work out pretty well for them. An optimistic, but solid fifth place in my opinion. So, the last of the non-obvious picks, Aberdeen at 4th. Yep, I've got them from relegation battling to European qualifiers in one season. Even despite losing both Calvin Ramsey and Lewis Ferguson for a combined £10 million plus, I think Jim Goodwin's a really promising manager only 40 years of age, despite him looking about 70. I guess that's what managing Al will all do to you. But I also think they've done some pretty interesting transfer business. Ojan Majowski is highly rated by those in the Hungarian game, and they also signed a player by the name of Buck, who admittedly I've never heard of. But he came from Benfica's academy, so he must be half decent. Finally, Jaden Richardson from Nottingham Forest looks like good business. The main transfer dealings that I'm really interested in seeing for them, however, are the ones involving Derby keeper Kelly Roos, who I thought looked good last season despite Derby's points deduction and eventual relegation, and the loan signing of Liam Scales from Celtic. I'm really optimistic about Aberdeen's chances this season, and I think they'll end up in fourth place. So, now onto the top three. At third, I've got my own club, Hearts. Last season, I predicted us to finish in a fairly average eighth place, but I was surprised a lot by a really convincing third place finish, and I can only see us repeating that. While we have lost John Suter and Aaron McInerney to Rangers and Perth Glory respectively, I think we've done some expe- exceptional business in the market with the likes of Alan Forrest, Lewis Nielsen and Alex Cochran coming in, as well as the signings of George Grant and Kai Rolls, who both look to be real quality and should be great additions. This is not even to mention the landmark signing of the summer for us, Lauren Shankland, who arrived at Hearts for a sizeable fee of nearly £500,000, but has already scored a brace versus Stoke in a friendly match in and, in my eyes, will be challenging the top scorer's spot fairly well next season. I think they have a real promise inside at the moment, and it should hopefully translate to an improved challenge on the old firm next season, even if we don't manage to finish above either of them. So, here's where it gets suspenseful. Which old firm side do I have winning the league? Well, I can answer that by saying that I've picked Rangers to finish second, unlike I did last year. This is for one main reason, and it's that they've sold two of their best players. The sale of Calvin Bassey for nearly £22 million, a Rebo for £7 million, and the January departure of Nathan Patterson for £12 million, not to mention. It's great business from a financial standpoint, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be difficult to replace them effectively. I think they've done an okay job on paper, to be honest, as Suter on a free improved through defence massively when fit, as well as the free signing of Tom Lawrence from Derby, who I think is a really quality player. I'm not too convinced about Ben Davies, Ridvan Yilmaz, or Rabi Matondo though, but we'll see how they do in the SPFL as they're all fairly young and could really kick on. My main concern for Rangers is that their core is only getting older though. McGregor is still one of their main keepers at 40, Goldson's 29, Tavernier is in his 30s, Lindstrom's 28, Morelos is obese and Jack is 30. I think they'll have a really large rebuild to do over the next couple of years, that's for sure. Finally, at first I've got Celtic. I think they've done some really great business in the market while retaining all of their best players, with Jota, Cameron Carter Vickers, and Dyson Maeda all joining the club permanently after their loan deals last season for a combined £15 million. Alexandro Bernabe is really highly rated among Argentinian pundits, and I think the free signings of Aaron Moy and Benjamin Segrist are both really shrewd. I'm not sure about Moritz Jens, but he's a young centre back with a reasonable option to buy and he evidently has top 5 league experience in him, so I think he'll be an interesting watch next season. In my opinion, Shetlick have only improved, unlike their rivals, and if they can get a good defensive midfielder, I reckon they'll win the league fairly comfortably. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed that. If you like videos like this and want more Scottish Premiership content, make sure to subscribe to my boy Kevin Twist if you've not already. 
Um, other than that, thanks to Kevin for having me on. Uh, if you want to see my channel, it's down in the description. I don't really make football videos, I make videos more on games and stuff like that, but if that's your thing, go for it. Uh, as I said, thanks to Kevin for having me on, and peace.